Years ago, when I was working at a deli, I was living on my own, paying bills and making ends meet by picking up odd jobs. Life was simple. Dial-up internet, no cell phone, and my TV was deeper than it was wide or tall. We're going to look at how solving an equation helped me plan out my month. The internet was just starting to be a thing. Websites were nowhere near as robust as they are now. Often, they were just a bunch of text and clip art center aligned down a page. If you were lucky, your website had buttons with actual graphics instead of just text hyperlinks or links. During that time, people clamored to be first in line on the internet. A handful would come to dominate their individual markets, but most were just home basement companies that wanted a slice of the action. Me? I wanted to have some fun, learn, and make some flaming logos. So I found a small business that needed some digital graphics made. As this was a completely new field, I had little to reference in terms of price. But considering I was making just under 10 bucks an hour at my deli job, I wanted a bit more for my time. I was able to negotiate a price of about $105 per pack of buttons, which was probably too low. But like I said, it was a small business. Working 40 hours a week at the deli meant that I was getting about $385 per week. For budgeting purposes, I only considered how much I was making working four weeks in a month. Anything extra would just get saved. That means that I made $1,540 per month from the deli. In terms of expenses, I added up all the items on my budget at the time, which included saving for college. When all was said and done, I wanted to earn about $1,960 per month. Obviously, that meant the deli job wasn't going to cut it. So, how many icon packs would I need in order to make my goals per month? There are a few ways to approach the problem. If this was the only equation I was ever going to encounter in my entire life, then I could just do a guess and check. That is, plug in sensible numbers and see when I got a good answer. But my personal preference is to use the method I'm about to teach you, because it'll work when guessing and checking is way too involved or the numbers won't work out evenly or whatever. So what is this method? To start, let's forge an equation. On the left side, we have the total amount of money earned. And on the right side, we have the total amount of money we want, which is 1960. So on the left side, we have two things to add. The amount of money from my deli job, 1540, and the amount of money made from making icon packs. Here, 105 is the amount earned per icon pack, and X is the number of packs I made that month, which is what we're looking for. If we can figure out what X is, then we know just how many packs I need to make. Now we just need to build a strategy to discover the value of X. Let's approach this from a unique perspective. Think for a moment of a set of scales. For them to be in balance, there needs to be an equal amount of weight in both left and right pans, different only in the weights actually used. It's the same with equations. For this equation to be true, both left and right sides must represent the same quantities, different only in how they're written. Let's play this out then with the scales. We'll put 1960 ones blocks in the right pan. Easy enough. In the left pan though, we need to put in two types of blocks, ones blocks like we have in the right pan and x blocks of which we have 105. Whatever x is, the expression 105x means that we have 105 of them. If we can get x all by itself on one pan and nothing but ones blocks on the other, then we will know exactly how much x weighs. But how do we get there? We want to simplify things a little bit. See how many ones blocks there are on both sides? It's a lot. So what happens if I take one away from both sides? Will that change the balance? Well, no, it really shouldn't. In fact, why stop there? Let's take away all we can. Now we ran out of one blocks on the left side, so we can't take any more. The ones blocks and the x blocks aren't necessarily the same weight, or rather value, so taking them one for one will unbalance things. What to do then? Well, let's look carefully at these piles. There may be more here than meets the eye. What we'd like to do is to divide the piles into a smaller size. Let's look at the physical scales again. I have two groups of masses that weigh the same overall. If I cut both groups in half, then it remains in balance. This makes intuitive sense, but also a physical sense. So if we cut the piles in half, that is divide them by two, and it remained in balance, could we then divvy them up using different numbers? Could we divide by three or five or something larger? Sure. In fact, technically, we can divide by anything we want, even if it doesn't divide evenly on both sides. We have 105 x blocks on the left, so maybe we should try that. We seem to be lucky here. 
When we divide both sides by 105, we get a whole number. That is 4. So that's what x is. 4. Now, I wouldn't want to have to physically arrange all of these blocks on metal scales. It's probably easier to solve this in its natural equation form. But let's keep in mind the things we did with the scales as we build the algebraic strategy. The first thing we did was to take away 1's blocks from both pans. We kept removing them until no 1's blocks remained on the left side. That is, we subtracted 1,541's blocks from both sides. Here's what this looks like in the algebraic form. form. Here's what this looks like in the algebraic form of the problem. The notation I'm using is similar to what we did in the past with addition and subtraction. That is, a long horizontal bar that has all the stuff we're working with on the top and all of the outputs of the operators on the bottom. When we finished this operation on the scales, we had 105 x's remaining in one pan. So let's just bring that down here in our little algebra world. These here cancel. And here, the subtraction gives us 420, like it did earlier. The next thing we did was to divide. Though there were other options we could have picked, the number we chose to divide by was 105, the coefficient of x. In the algebraic form, we'll write it a little differently. I'll make two separate expressions, but there's a good reason for it, which I'll get into later. Simplifying is straightforward. The left side gives us 1x, or just x, $1 and $8 mean the same thing after all, and the right side gives us 4. Thus, we're left with the equation x equals 4. The value of x couldn't be any easier to read. What we just did is called solving for x. That is, we isolated x on one side of the equation, leaving the other side to be nothing more than just numbers, which are easy to understand. Each one of the operations we did, the subtraction and the division, are example of something called inverse operations. The name comes from what it is. Operations, like the four basic ones of addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, and inverse, as in the opposite of the operations that are already there. Now that we've captured what we did with the scales in algebraic form, we can now use this to devise a strategy for solving other equations we come across. If we look at the left side of the equation, where the x in question is, we can see that two things are happening. It's being multiplied by 105 and added to 1540. The order of operations tells us that we will do the multiplication first and the addition second. Now, to invert these operations, we will unravel them in the opposite order. That is, we will subtract 1540 and then divide by 105. Of course, to keep the pans in balance, anything we do to one side, we must do to the other. That is a crucial rule to understand, so keep that in mind. So the strategy then is to figure out what operations you need to invert, figure out what order to invert them in, and then carry them out on both sides of the equation. This strategy will work for many equations, but as with all rules, there are exceptions and there are spots where people get tripped up. We'll talk more about these in future videos, but if you come away from this with an understanding of this strategy, then you're doing just fine for right now. Back to the original question then. I would need to make four icon packs in order to meet my monthly goals. And in fact, that's exactly what I did. And it was good for a few months. Right up until they didn't pay me for two batches in a row, and hoped that I would be okay with it. Which I wasn't. So I pieced right the heck on out of there. It worked out though. Because by then, school was picking back up, and well, adulting means juggling your time carefully. Such is life. Happily, I was able to take those skills forward, as you can see here. Thanks to Aragami for hosting this episode of the Taylor series, and thank you to all of my patrons for all of your support. I couldn't do this without you. And congratulations to you on reaching the next term in your own Taylor expansion. I'm Derek Taylor, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please click like and subscribe. If you really like the video, come on over to our Patreon page where you can get involved and see all the cool stuff we're doing.